The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. Sports! It's kind of weird today because it's going to be, for now, the first sports without really talking about the Cubs or the White Sox. Although I do have a little bit of Cubs White Sox news to put in here about Major League Baseball in general. It's Wild Card Day. We'll get to that too. Uh, but we do have some Bears news, and we'll we'll see how long you care about that. It's an end of an era. We had, we had a lot of fun this baseball season. We really did. A lot to talk about with the White Sox being so bad, but it still was so much to talk about. Um, but let's start with the Bears here real quick. The Bears wide receiver Chase Claypool's absence from the game last week. Uh, Kenzie, in case you missed this when you are out of town, he was inactive for the game, okay? But... He didn't show up for the game. Players that are inactive yes. usually show up for the game still in their jeans on the sideline. I think it depends how inactive you are. Yeah, you know, we're, we're in joggers. He was healthy. He was just an inactive because he's an a-hole, pretty I've much. Never, I've never seen an NFL player wear jeans now that I think about it. On the sideline? I think Jay Cutler. Those, those muscular legs are very hard to put denim on. Yeah. Stand <laughs> here and think about this for a second. Have you ever seen Tom Brady in a pair of jeans? Have mm. you ever seen Justin Fields in a pair of jeans? Has Brian Urlacher ever worn a pair of jeans? I've never seen it before. I could picture Brian Urlacher in some Wranglers. Oh, he's a real man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but today's jeans with the Lycra, they stretch on those thighs to your point that they can't fit them on. I'm telling you, as somebody who's not muscular but just larger on the bottom half of my body, <laughs> it is tough. <laughs> I, I prefer non-denim on that lower. It is a whole thing. Well, so I can't even imagine if it was muscular. Chase Claypool could have wore joggers on the side. Because you just said jeans, and I really started to think I've never seen, like, professional athletes don't wear jeans. Hmm. Well, if you want to, if you've seen that professional athlete in jeans, let us know, yeah, ever. Please call in. Go call, call in. <laughs> oh, God. So now Matt Eberflus, the coach of the Bears, says that Claypool will remain away from the team all week until Thursday Night Football when they're going to be in D.C. at the Commanders game. Uh, that's not going well for a guy that they made a big trade for, expected big things out of a guy that was uh, notoriously not a locker room guy, for lack of a better way to say it. And turns out he isn't. Uh, so he's probably off the team. I mean, he's probably going to be trying to trade him. Now he's got no trade value for a guy that went to Notre Dame, was a freak athlete, first-round pick for the Steelers, had a great, great first year in the NFL, and has been kind of garbage ever since. And uh, now he's garbage here. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Look, it's a lesson to the kids out there. No matter how talented you might be, if you can't win the mental game, uh, you're not going to play. That's right. A lesson it took me a very long time to learn as somebody prone to anger and outbursts. Oh, well, you missed your D3 window for baseball. I know. Case, the case did that. Do you have a lot of outbursts when you played the sports case? Oh, God, yeah. I, I, I got ejected from a basketball, grade, uh, basketball game in second grade because I punched a kid. I had to get a police escort to a, my car when I played in the baseball tournament in Kentucky because they were afraid that my team was going to get into a fist fight in the parking lot with another team. I've, I've been oh. ejected from a few baseball uh, games. You're kind of sloughing over that a little quickly there. Why did you specifically have a police escort? Did the rest of the team also have a police escort? Because he was scared. Well, <laughs> he, called, he called it in. <laughs> I don't feel safe. And... I'm in a bad part of town. Please come help me. These guys are bigger than me. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I started it, but my entire team ended up getting an escort to the oh. to the parking lot. At least they had your back. And then we went to Fazoli's afterwards. It was you know awesome. Oh, Fazoli's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. good. Where, wasn't your high school the Royals? They were, And then yeah. you got a police escort? <laughs> <laughs> tough side of town, man. Uh, good news for the Bears, though, in this point. Uh, staying winless, heading into week five against the uh, Panthers, which will um, – the, the Bears own the 2024 first-round pick right now because of that trade. They also could have the number two overall pick as well. Yes. This is wild. This first time in – neat. A, a, <laughs> first time in American – That could help. Yeah, first time in American sports history a team would have a one and two pick in, the, in a draft. There's a, So the number one pick in the draft this upcoming year is likely going to be this quarterback, Caleb Williams, who plays for USC, USC currently. And he, did you see what he said yesterday? He was like, I'm only playing for the Cowboys or the Vikings or like three other teams. The Bears were not listed. He said he, said he could make more money staying in college playing another year than going into the NFL draft because of all the NIL deals. Yeah, and um, that's pulling kind of an Eli Manning, which we'll talk about in a second. Is the only player I can ever remember that was drafted by a team and said, I'm not going to play. And so a trade was broken, and he ended up on the Giants and winning two Super Bowls there. Kenzie, if you've never seen the, the night that Eli Manning was drafted, he essentially sat arms crossed like a like a grumpy little kid and was like, I'm not playing for the San Diego Chargers. And then the Chargers drafted him and had to trade him. 
It was fantastic. It was it was wild holding hostage a billion dollar team. Ever, people people play in the damn CFL, and he's over here like, not that team for me. No, no, no. In no, no. the NFL, uh, history proved him right. That's right. Two he, Super Bowls. He, he looked like an a hole at the time, but there he is, a Hall of Famer with two Super Bowls. Uh, wild card baseball today. Anybody care? Without the Cubs or the White Sox. And I know the White Sox weren't going to be in the Cubs' rough weekend. So you got Rangers Rays at 2, Blue Jays at Twins at 340, uh, D-backs and Brewers at 6, and at 7, Marlins Phillies. I would want the Brewers to make it. I feel I'm just bitter. And now their best pitcher's out? Oh, come on. It almost always happens to them. Right before they go into a playoff run, they lose somebody. so angry. I think I'm going to root for the Marlins. I like that team. I'm it, it, it's, no. not, it's nothing. It's And I want to make it clear. It's nothing against the Cubs. I'm not rooting for this team because they took the Cubs' playoff spot. I'm rooting for the team because they're made up of White Sox players, and I think they're really fun to watch. Jake Berger. That's they're right. Like, wow, this could have been us. <laughs> Can you <laughs> imagine? Oh, my God. Look at them go. <laughs> Look at them go with a different team name. Well, I'll be riding with the Phillies to keep a happy household with my wife from Philadelphia. It's going to be a, a... I think a, the Braves are probably going to win. Uh, well, I mean, they're the best team in baseball. The whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, going down that way. But some fun afternoon baseball you can watch if you're into it. Um, also... A lot of people, when you look at the White Sox Park, Case got so much flack last week for putting up a picture of dollar game day for guaranteed rate and no one there. And people think that people don't go to baseball games. But Major League Baseball had historic largest growth uh, almost in 30 years of attendance at baseball games. 70 million people went to baseball games all over the country. If you want to look at our, our teams, uh, the Cubs were ninth with 2.7 million people averaging 34,000 a game. White Sox were 24th. With 1.6, averaging 21,000 a game. We, Cubs are only ninth? I thought they, they dropped. Go higher. Well, who's the rest? Uh, I don't have Countdown. a whole. Dodgers is one. You got the Padres. You got the Yankees. Those are the top three. Um, but the Cubs used to be you in the top the five. list? I have. I don't have the list up to the Cubs. I can get it for you if you like. Oh, wow, good show prep, Brian. Well, there you go. I gave you the Way Dodgers, the Yankees, the Padres. Uh, I think the Astros are in there. Um, so Cheaters. <laughs> they didn't cheat with Everyone attendance. Everyone brings a cowbell. Yeah. <laughs> Kizzy, do you want me to list the top nine? I've got the top nine here. I oh, want to okay. know who beats the Cubs. Because the Cubs do have a really high attendance, so I'm really curious. Okay, all right. Dodgers. Cow- Are we counting down? So is that eight? That's one. That's one. Oh, <laughs> Does no one know how payoff works? I already said the <laughs> Dodgers. Mind. It's too late. This blew the wad. Dodgers, Yankees, Padres, Cardinals, Braves, Phillies, Astros, Blue Jays. Cubs. That surprises me. Yeah. People yeah. in Canada love baseball. What can I say? I wish I would have done better prep for you to have that ready to go. Thanks, Jeez. Case. No, you know. The Blue Jays surprised you, right? Because the Canadians, you don't think, you know, hey. Hey. Like, I, don't, I just don't hear a lot about the Blue Jays. I don't know. At one point, the Cubs uh, in past years, before pandemic, of course, but they were, you know, in the top three, top five. So that surprised me, too, that it's lo- that low. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's like supposed to be like a psycho fan base. That's all I'm saying. Also, White Sox at 21,000 average surprised me, too. Now, I know there's some games earlier in the season, summer games, and then, of course, September was a disaster, so no one went, so it averages out to that. But 24th, White Sox are in Major League Baseball with a tennis. Not that bad. It's not too, no, it isn't too bad at it's all. a lot of teams. Yeah. Who had the worst? Do you have that written down or no? Uh, okay, Did who's the worst? Did you do anything today? I, I, listen, I just got <laughs> here. I was here yesterday, okay? That's what I was. You didn't, you didn't think that the worst prepped? Okay, so who's the last? Unbelievable. The, the, the worst attendance in Major League Baseball is the Oakland A's. They had under 1 million total fans in attendance. Just for reference, the Cubs had uh, 2.7 million, and the White Sox had 1.6 million. Oakland A's under 1 million total attendance this year. Oh, wow. There you so go. It sounds like a lot of people, though. Doesn't that throw you off? Well, it's 162 games, or 81, I guess. I know, but I still think, like, I, I just imagine, like, the lowest, like, 20,000 people. What? I don't yeah. know. Wait a minute, yeah. still a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, they had record attendance, MLB overall, in the last 30 years of going to baseball games. So the myth that people don't go to games anymore is clearly a myth. They're, they're going. People are going to games. Get out of the house. Uh, finally, last night on Monday Night Football, the Giants got embarrassed. But I love watching the Manning cast which is Peyton and Eli on ESPN2. And all they do is talk smack through the whole game. And you got two Hall of Famers doing that, which is kind of rare. And they had Will Ferrell on last night with them. And Will Ferrell, they start getting into the mom, the meatloaf line uh, from old school. And here's... Uh, wedding Crashers, not wedding, old school. Wed, wedding Crashers. Come on, Moran. My bad, my bad. Come on. Uh, wedding Crashers. Great prep. Yeah, I, <laughs> just trying to get prepared here for the game. And I have the audio here to hear Eli getting taught. How to save mom the meatloaf from Will Ferrell. Ah, meatloaf! <laughs> meatloaf! On a scale of one to ten, is Eli's Will Ferrell impression a one or a two? I'll say like a 1.1. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yeah. You rushed it a little bit. 
clearly some, yell at my mom. There's some rage behind it. This guy had some Off rage, so it was more like, Number Mom, meatloaf! <laughs> like, I got it here. Mom, meatloaf! But a little more growl. Mom, meatloaf! <laughs> Mom, meatloaf! <laughs> Why did you drag it out? Mom! Why did you drag it out like that? Just it's bark like a it. Southern draw thing. It's Ma, a southern draw. Milo! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, yo, my mom's starting to come down here. She's freaking out. She doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> well, let's hear She's the actual. Concern. Let's hear the actual line from Wedding Crashes, of course. You hungry? Hey, Ma! Can we get some meatloaf? Uh, Chaz, I think I'm okay. I, I had a bite right before I came over. Thank you. You sure? You know what? I will have some meatloaf. Let's have some meatloaf. You want some? Yes. I knew you'd come. Hey, Ma! The meatloaf! <laughs> we want it now! The meatloaf! What is she doing? I never know what she's doing <laughs> back there. ma The meatloaf! <laughs> the Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101, and we have Q101 Twisted tickets right now. 312-591-8300. We're not just giving them out like yesterday. It was very easy yesterday if you listen to the announcement at 8 a.m., where we announced all four nights, the bands, the pre-sale that's going on now. You can just go to Q101.com for all the information and get your tickets before Thursday at 10 p.m. when the pre-sale ends and then the regular general on sale happens Friday. But right now, free ones, baby. Uh, for night four, we're going to do Young the Giant, the Gaslight Anthem, Little Image. Ooh, that's uh, a good one. Uh, Friday. They're, they're all good. And that is the Friday night one. You're right. After Alert. A, that's the one you when you've kind of, let's say, you've paced yourself a little, just a little bit. Friday, no pacing. Going all no, in. No, it's great. That's a sleep in the next day scenario. Hell I'm into it. yeah. So call 312-591-8300 right now to get in. You got to win in trivia to get the tickets. Uh, wait a minute. We already, uh, let's see here. Oh, boy, Brian. We already played that one. Why is this computer messing with me? Do you think it's, do you honestly think the computer's messing up? Absolutely. That's not my fault. You're literally the one pushing the buttons. I understand. For the computer. The computer put Pierce the Veil in twice. It's a great song. I just don't want to feel like playing it twice right now. You think it put it in twice? It did. Just automatically loaded it? You don't believe me, do you? We don't have AI technology here. (laughs) It's just you. I'm the AI. Yeah. Which which causes it to go in twice. It's not great. No, no. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. Clash with Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q101. Here we go. Q101 Twisted Christmas Week as we made the announcement yesterday. Tickets all week long. Sponsored by our great friends Heineken, Byline Bank, and Triton College. We got tickets for night four. Friday, December 8th. Young the Giant, the Gaslight Anthem, and Little Image. And competing for these tickets will be Katie in Manhattan. Katie, ahoy. Tell us something really quick about yourself. Ahoy. Um, I work in human resources, so I'm looking forward to it. I've mm. never played before. So so, Wait, so what exactly does that mean? What do you do? What, what do you resource for the humans? Um, I do a little bit of everything. So it's, it's in warehousing. So I do recruiting, um, employee oh. relations, benefits, all, all that fun stuff. Yeah, you're, like, you- you're like the go-to. You need a job or you need benefits. You're the one, baby. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but also, when they see her coming down the hallway and say, uh, come into Katie's office, please. She's HR. You know what no, that means. is she? Are yes. you HR? I am. That's I, what, is that you, what that stands for? That, okay. Uh, give give uh, Kenzie a point. Or actually, give, she didn't know that HR. <laughs> <laughs> it's a oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yes, Katie, Katie, I like your chances today. Oh, uh, you know. Kenzie right. takes one day off. The brain gets completely reset. I just didn't even think about it. Uh, I don't know. HR. I was sure. wondering where we were going with that. Like, that sounds like a real fun job, talking to people, and putting flowers around. I didn't even around. think about right. that. That's the full job title, I see. Yes. Good to know. So now you know. HR. You Brian don't... would be like, do you think you're in trouble? I'm like, no, I'm going to human resources. What do you mean? What are you talking about? They have resources for me. Yeah, it sounds great. I'm probably getting more benefits. They probably just have a question for something, I'm sure. Oh, my God. Good to know. <laughs> Turns out I can't wait. I have an HR meeting tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be so great. <laughs> All right, Katie, now we've learned something already. Everybody's learned something here at Well, this Kenzie has. Yes. <laughs> so uh, let's see who goes first. First one to five wins. Listen carefully. 
If Kenzie gets one wrong, you can steal a point. She can do the same with you. Call heads or tails right now. Three, two, one, go. Heads. Ah, it's tails. Ah. Mm. Don't write me up, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No. Coin toss was fixed under the HR or human resources, ah, <laughs> which is tricky. wonderful. All right. So uh, Kenzie's going first, right? Yep. Kenzie, uh, what is the name of the winged horse of Greek mythology? Oh, Pegasus. Pegasus is right. Good the job. cute Uh <laughs> Katie, uh, who starred as the female lead in the 2004 version of A Cinderella Story? Ooh. Um, Three, two, Hillary Duff. Oh my gosh, he pulls that right at the end there. Good job. I love that movie. <laughs> it is so I'm like, good. I wasn't sure if that was the right version. Yeah, it's so I'm cute. Like, okay. It's her and Chad Michael Murray. It's a good one. Oh god, yeah. it is just it's so good. <laughs> one to one, back to Kenzie. Yes, uh, Kenzie. How many pieces of bun are there in a McDonald's Big Mac? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with three, Brian. Uh, there is three, three in the Big Mac. Good job. Uh, let's see. Back to Katie. Yes. Katie, what model married musician Tommy Lee after knowing him for just 96 hours? Sorry, can you repeat that? So what model married musician Tommy Lee after knowing him for just 96 hours? Ooh. Three, two, one. Nine. Okay. Pamela uh, Anderson. Pamela Anderson. Great movie called The Dirt. Get you up to date on those informa the information. Also, uh, the is that I don't is that the dirt? Well, because Tommy Lee is the uh, dirt spot Motley Crue. And I, then, I, I don't think there was a big Pamela Anderson. I watched The Dirt. No, it's I, also it's also a book more so than a movie. Well, it's There's also, also like Pamela Pam and Tommy Anderson. on Hulu. Yeah, I was I would go for something more specific to the but Pamela. I watched Pam and Tommy, and it's not that good. But The Dirt is really good. Is it? I thought it was good. I see, I liked The Dirt, but it was you know. I, it's it was, it was a lot of a lot of nudity. <laughs> I was like, wow. did, you, did you not let your husband watch that? I no, we watched it, but I remember just being like, oh my god, this is this is aggressive, and I, I'm not normally like, I don't think it's that bad. I'm like, I feel like I'm in Tampa. <laughs> this is a lot. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. All right, it is three to one, and it's back to Kenzie. Uh, Kenzie, what company makes the Xbox console? The what company makes it? Three. At Nintendo? Nintendo does not make the Xbox. Katie? I thought Xbox made it. <laughs> Katie? Um, Microsoft? It's Microsoft, the Microsoft Xbox. I wanted to say Xbox, but I figured the way you <laughs> asked the question, it wouldn't be that. <laughs> well, you might have to go to HR and find out the real answer there. Uh, All right, it is three to two, and it's back to Katie. She can tie it up here. Uh, Katie, Tim Duncan spent his entire NBA career playing for what team? Ooh. Three. My boyfriend will kill me for not knowing this, but uh, I'm not. I hurt. hope not. I hope he's uh, blink if you're okay. <laughs> we can't see her, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Uh, Kenzie, Tim Duncan. The Spurs. The Spurs. <laughs> the Spurs. There you go. This is a bad spot here now, Katie, because Kenzie's got four. You got two. Next one wins. And it's back All to right. Kenzie. She can give everybody a shot at these <gasps> Young the Giant Gaslight Anthem tickets. <sighs> Kenzie, what crop failure caused the Irish famine? What do you mean? <laughs> what crop failed to cause the Irish famine? Corn. Corn? It was not corn. I don't know. Katie, do you know? Potato. It was the potato famine. That's right. Oh, yeah. Everyone knows about the great potato famine. Well, Irish people are known for the potatoes. They love potatoes. Oh. Do. do they not like corn? Uh, no, they, no, they hate it. They hate corn, Irish people. I didn't people. know that. There's a whole cranberry song about how much they hate corn. Is it really? Yeah. About how much <laughs> Irish people hate corn? That's right. You're lying. All right, it's four to three. It's back to Katie. Uh, Katie, uh, what song begins with the line, the world is a vampire? Uh... Song three, two, one. Oh. Uh. Kenzie, for the oh, win. It's Smashing Pumpkins. It is a Smashing Pumpkins. Are you and I song? always say the song wrong in case it makes fun of me. Uh huh. It's um, it's 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 butterflies, uh. and bullet wings. Damn it! Oh. <laughs> what is it? Eradicate. You did, did a dyslexic version. It's bullet with butterfly no, wings. That is Nutcracker. It's yeah. the longest yeah. name ever. Variations of it, but yeah, I, I didn't know the full full thing. Oh uh. God. <laughs> All right, Kenzie. Oh, so, I can never get it right. <laughs> Send the folks home happy here. You got four. Katie's got three. Give everybody a shot at these tickets. Oh, it's exhausted. Katie's turn now? It's, it's Kenzie's turn. Oh, back it's to Kenzie. Yes. Kenzie. Okay, four the win. 
Thank you, Kenzie. I work here. I, 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 haven't, I haven't the HR yet to discuss that. He's like, who? <laughs> <laughs> Kenzie, uh, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee is hosted by what legendary comedian? Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> I'm sorry, Katie. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, we appreciate you listening, but hang tight because you'll have a chance these tickets... Uh... Let's, let's do it right now, actually. Hang up, Katie, real quick. 312 591 8300. God bless the baby. Caller 10 will be at Q101's Twisted Christmas, sponsored by Heineken, Byline Bank, and Triton College. Night four is Young the Giant, the Gaslight Anthem, and Little Image. And you are there from Brian and Kenzie and Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. <laughs> The Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101 and Brian and Darian took home the night four tickets for Q101's Twisted Christmas. And don't worry, we'll have more tickets all week long right around this time for, (coughs) excuse me, so we'll have different nights of Q101's Twisted Christmas. So just kind of be here for it and continue to give away a lot of tickets, but make sure you buy them because the pre-sale is going on right now at Q101.com. The pre-sale code is byline. Go to Q101.com. And the regular on sale is 10 a.m. Friday. That's not to win, just to clarify. Yeah, do not text that word in. That's to go buy pre-sale tickets online, is that code word. Yep, and it's even there for you if you forget it at Q101.com to sit in there for you to get your Christmas gifts for you, for people you know, your loved ones, everybody. We want everybody there at Twisted. It is a glorious event. Something completely different happened over the weekend in McHenry as I can't imagine the people that were on the lake enjoying this beautiful weekend in Chicago and a boat that was streaming through all the other boats way too fast, eventually hits the edge of the river, the Fox River, and goes airborne 70 feet into somebody's house. Unbelievable that, I mean, no one caught it on video, really. I I think there may be. Oh, then it didn't happen. Oh, you know what? Never mind. There's actually a surveillance. I'm looking at ABC7. There's a surveillance video, like one of those kind of ring cameras. Oh, God, those come in handy, don't they? (laughs) Right here, it's for sure. And it's not perfect because it's a little grainy to zoom in on it. But, oh, my gosh, this video, Kenzie, you have to watch this. And the boat goes out of the water and just into the house and... It's one of those things that probably people that were there are going to be talking about How for years. How close was this house to the water? Well, the homes up there are kind of like right, like, you know, 70 feet, 80 feet, 100 feet right down there. Normally, so you the, you're, you know, you have some yard. Yeah, a little bit of yard. They had a little, they had a little bit, but the boat went 70 feet in the air after hitting the edge of the Good river. Good Lord. They were going way too fast. And dangerous, you know, deadly accidents. Terrible. But also, to just be there to see that happen, you're kind of like, what? You know, and it's one of those things, you, do, you ever have some, do you have something like that in your head that, Something wild and freaky that you saw once that stays there forever. For example, I saw I saw a guy on a motorcycle on LaSalle. He was riding two motorcycles. Okay, they were buddies, I guess. And somebody yelled at the one dude. He was like, hey, Mike! Because I think they were going to meet up. I don't know these guys. I just saw what was going on. Yes. When he did that, the one guy on the bike turned a little, and his front wheel caught the, uh, what do you call it, the foot pedal, the foot pegs? And the bike locked up, and the guy went into the air, and the bike went into the air. And the bike did a flip in air, and so did the guy did a flip in air. You were riding behind Evil Knievel. (laughs) I I swear. I know Evil Knievel's sister listens to the show. You thought he said Mike, and he's like, yo, Evil! (laughs) (laughs) Evil Mike. So the guy then landed on his feet, and the motorcycle missed him by an inch as it flipped over and rolled down the street. This isn't real. This didn't happen to you. 1,000% real. It didn't happen to me. I just happened to see it. I saw it on the sale. I couldn't right. believe it. Swear on Harper. I swear on Harper's life. I saw this. Oh wow! Yeah, unbelievable. Somebody check on Harper. Yeah, go check on Harper. Oh, <laughs> maybe, maybe exaggerating the story a little bit. No, but I mean this. This actually happened, and I just. I this happened many years ago, and I, I'll never forget. Just seeing that. I never. The guy landed on his feet after doing a flip in the air. The bike totally hit the ground and, and just kind of shattered. But is there something that you saw once that you'll never forget in your brain? And you love telling the story, like I love telling that one there to Kenzie. Oh, that's nuts. Yeah, 312 You can check in on that. I'd love to hear your stories. But um, I'm sure those people saw that boat. You know, they're not, not going to forget it. Not I, have, forget I have a stupid one. Can I uh, tell it really fast? Sure, this? yeah. I swear to God, I saw time glitch once. I swear. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't know what it was. but I, So I was cleaning, okay? Uh-huh. And I look at the clock. And the clock said 426. Okay. I saw it. 
I was, I was checking the time very specifically. Yep. And then I was cleaning really, really, really fast. Yep. And I turned around and saw the clock again, and it was 4.23. Oh. And it flipped me out. Because this is now several minutes later yep. than when I first checked, okay? <laughs> so I was like, oh, my God. And I went and told my mom, I'm like, you're never going to believe this. But, like, something glitched. Maybe I'm moving so fast like Superman. Yeah. The time reverses. I'm cleaning. And my mom's like, just as like you saw it wrong. And I go, I didn't see it wrong, nah. damn it. Don't you tell me what I saw. No, but I swear. That's in my mind. I'm like, I don't care what anybody says. I saw like there was a weird time glitch and I saw it. <laughs> damn it. A glitch in the matrix. You saw there it. What is? It that's was wild. like I specifically was like, oh, 426. I really wanted to be done with this by 430. I had a whole thought process <laughs> in my head. Then what happened after that? Like time go forward again? Yeah, time went forward again. So I re-hit 426. I lived it twice, baby. Oh, no. That's wild. Uh, check in at 312-591-8300 when you saw something that you'll just kind of never forget, uh, like the glitch in the Matrix. Tim's checking in from Aurora. Tim, uh, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, guys? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. So what? do you have a story like that, something you saw? Yeah, so it's kind of similar to the boat situation. So this happened about 15 years ago. I'm sitting in my room, and all of a sudden, I hear this loud boom, right? And so I look out my back window, and I see these kids rush out of this car. Well, this car was inside someone's living room. What? Yeah, so these kids, I found out later that these kids stole this car, and then they lost control right down the, like, right, uh, on the street behind me. And he just lost control and went straight into the, the person's house. And um, the fire department and the police and everything came came over really quick. But like, it's when I looked out the back window, these kids, I just saw like four or five of them jump out of the car and take off. Damn! Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. So that's like, a lot of kids in the car. Kind of, I know that's not the main point of the story. You know, it's just like a lot of people keep yeah, jumping I, out. It's a clown car. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! So I guess was it, you know the neighbors that the car went into. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I knew the people that lived next to them. I didn't know the actual house itself, but yeah, they, they, nobody was home, so luckily no one got hurt. Damn. But this car, like I said, it just drove straight in through the front door and ended up in their living room. Oh mm. my God, that'd be so annoying. Yeah. Just yeah. like, no, all the, as long as you're safe, after everyone's safe, you have to be like, God, this is going to be so annoying to fix. They're calling the insurance company. Yeah, so the car went into my living room. It's like, I just need to, I only need, I, I imagine explaining like builders. I just need the front of my house. I don't <laughs> need any, I don't need four walls. I need one. It would just be such a pain in the ass. They're like, well, we can't do that without upgrading your siding on the outside. No, no, there's a car went through the front. Everything else is golden. Yeah. And then trying their insurance company saying, ah, uh, you're not covered for that. I what? need half a bay window. Yeah. I'm not covered for a car going in my front <laughs> lawn. Come on. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. I was Brian and Kenzie on Q101 talking about things you saw that you'll never forget. Whatever it is. It doesn't have to be something horrible. Uh, but it led from that Fox River, that uh, accident where the boat flew 70 feet out of the water into a house. And I guarantee the people that were there just enjoying the weekend up there in McHenry were just sitting there enjoying themselves and just see this boat fly over their head and go right into a house. And uh, wild. Kenzie saw a glitch in the Matrix. Her clock went backwards one day. That's what stays in her head. It did. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it did. She's standing by that, that we're all living in the Matrix, and her clock went backwards three minutes while she was sitting there in real time, yeah. doing things. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, our guy here, Joe, checked in, said, I saw an asteroid while I was looking out the window at my parents' house in Downers Grove and it hit in Park Forest. He said, the odds of seeing that are about a one in a trillion. Now, it happened a long time ago. He said in the 90s. So I don't know if we can look at news reports to see if an asteroid hitting Park Forest. I want to verify that story. Mm. Uh, but I've seen things in the sky. I've seen UFOs. And I remember that very clearly. Uh, somebody checked in and said they saw somebody get struck by lightning. That's wild. Holy cow. Mm. They said they didn't make it either. They didn't know the person. Sorry, Brian brings bad news. The person died. Let's pull one out for him. You know, that happened to me. My um, my best friend in like seventh and eighth grade and all that. She got struck by lightning. What? Yeah, she passed away. Oh, my God. People don't think, like people make jokes about getting struck by lightning, but it really does. Because if you don't have rubber on your body, that's what stops the current. Yeah. 
Like, a lot of people pass away from it because the electrical current keeps running through your system. That was always the big joke, like, when, uh, the, not a joke necessarily, but if it was a lightning storm, uh, make sure you got your uh, gym shoes on there. Your, my dad would say the gym shoes on because that'll stop. So if I'm going to get struck by lightning, the gym shoes are going to save my life? Rubber stops the ability for it to continue to course through your body. So if you don't, rubber, it'll just keep going back and forth until yeah, it, it can, runs out. Yeah, it can run in your system. Holy cow. So it's a continuous shock. God. Yeah. yeah. Or like if you're in the shower and lightning, you're supposed to get out of the shower. See, that You told me that one. I hadn't heard that one before. Yeah, because it goes through the pipes, apparently. It goes through the pipes. <laughs> pipes, they do. They pipes keep moving. Oh, but you're not touching the pipe. I don't get it. I don't know. Well the, well, the water in the pipe gets electrical and then electrocutes you. I don't know if there's a plumber out there, an expert that can explain that, if that's true. I feel, just... like, I feel like they've updated pipes. <laughs> they, can, they can stop all lightning? See, yeah, like, you know. But... I don't know. I mean, good to know. Brandon's checking in from Portage. Uh, Ahoy, Brandon. Uh, what is something that you just will never forget you saw? Go ahead. Ahoy, Brian and Kenzie. So I was on my way to Wisconsin. It was a snowstorm. The weather was bad. And uh, people started slipping and sliding because there was black ice everywhere. Yeah. I started sl- I started sliding, and I seen there was a Mercedes SUV in front of me. And my first thought was, I don't want to hit this car. I don't want to hit any cars. I started hitting the brakes. Didn't do anything. I'm still sliding towards the back of this SUV. So I don't know why, for whatever reason, I decided to throw the Jeep in four-wheel drive. And instead of trying to stop, I hit the gas. I was able to control my forward momentum going left and right. I just couldn't stop myself. So I tried to avoid all the cars as they're smacking into each other. The cars were literally bouncing off each other like like ping pong balls right as I was about to hit them. Damn. At the... What what was causing all the accidents to begin with is a semi was jackknifing, and he was actually, like, grinding across the center median of the highway. At that same time, another semi was getting onto the highway, and he realized it was black ice, and he started jackknifing. So these two semis are both ja- – one's already jackknifed, grinding down the center median. The other one's coming towards – the semi that's already messed up. Holy cow. I had no other option but to just floor it. I I thought for sure the back of my Jeep was going to get crushed, but I was like, at least I'm going to get through this and not die. Somehow, some way, I made it through it, never got hit. And then once the the two semis hit each other, 294 was blocked from median to median. There was no more traffic coming through. I stopped my Jeep on the middle of 294 and got out and just looked at it like, I cannot believe... I just made it through this. And you could still hear cars, like, smacking into each other, oh, all oh. hitting into the back and into the semi. It was, it was the craziest thing I ever experienced. I, I just, I was shocked that I made it through it without a scratch. God. You had, like, a guardian and, angel I'll on your side. I'll never forget it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There, there's no reason I should have made it through that, let alone made it through without even a dent, a scratch, or nothing. I mean, it was it was insane. I had my buddy with me. That's the only proof I got is he was with me. He's like, did that really just happen? Like, yeah, man, we, we, we made it through that. Like, I can't even park at Target was... without getting a ding. <laughs> Annoying. This guy, this guy got through two jackknife semis. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101.